Hey everyone, and welcome to this short video. If you're watching this on May the 18th, 2023, then happy Global Accessibility Awareness Day. If not, welcome. So we're going to have a look at using the different tools and browsers that I've mentioned in the article for testing now specifically in this case, color contrast. So this page um, has some specific problems. And we're not going to test everything in Firefox. This is the browser that's open currently, uh, so that we have, can have a look at how we do this in different browsers. Let's start off with this link. We can see just by looking at it that we have a problem there. So what are we get, we're going to do is inspect it. So it's highlighted over here. Now, if we go over here and we click, you can see down here, it's very small. Let me try and see. There we go. So here you can see that it does not need uh, WCAG standards for accessible text. And it's calculated against that background. So what we can do is let's bump it up. Now it's going to go to a different color. So what we can do is let's just pick another color. Oh, it jumped way over there. Uh, let's pick this and see what it thinks about that. Now we're passing. We're barely passing, but we're passing. So, you know, this is one way in Firefox how you can check that. Let's refresh the page. Another way you can do it, and this is not going to inspect one specific element, but if you click the Accessibility Inspector, over here is Check for Issues. Currently it's set to None, but what you can do is select Contrast. And now it's going to call out exactly the elements that doesn't pass contrast. And you can see it here on the right hand side as well. This one gets pretty close. This one is far off. Okay, so that's Firefox. Let's move on to Chromium. So this specifically is Arc, but it's Chromium. So it has the familiar Chrome Dev tools, same page. So what we can do here is if we select this text over here, now it's highlighted, we can see the color. When we click, here we can see our contrast ratio is off. And if we expand that, we can now see that at AA level, we're at 3, and the AAA, there's 4.5 is what we need. We need 3 and 4, we have 1.22. So what we can do, either use one of the other color models, but we don't need to do that. This is just going to change the opacity. What we want is a color that's above the line. So if you move it above the line, now we have a color that passes. So that's how you can check this in Chrome. Let's, while we're at it, let's also check this link that's more styled like a button. So now if you click on the background color, it's fine. It's when you click on the foreground color, it's going to tell us we're wrong. So <clears throat> we can either change the foreground color or we can change the background color. So if we go down there, now we've properly, we're all the way at 12.4. So we are passing a triple A and double A. Okay, so that's, and that's what these lines are, right? To indicate a range in which you should be safe. Okay, so that is using the Chrome DevTools. Now, <clears throat> let's jump over to Safari. Now, in Safari, and if I'm wrong here, I would love to hear what you can use. I assume there should be a uh, web extension that you can install, but I'm not 100% sure. So currently, if I, for example, <clears throat> select this, and I click on this foreground color. I do get a color picker, but there's nothing here that's telling me that there is a contrast problem here. Now, Safari does have these audits, but there's no audit already set up to test for color contrast. We'll solve that in, in, in a later video, but for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to pull in a trusty color contrast analyzer. So this is the one from the Pacciello group that I've mentioned in the video, I mean in the article. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab this picker and now we're going to choose our background color. And it might be a little tricky. I mean, this zooms in quite a lot. So you can, <clears throat> you can potentially get this gray. So there we can see it fails. Now, if you're not 100% sure that you got the exact gray color maybe, you can head into here. And so, <clears throat> oh, this is the other one. It's fine. There's that one. So 76727. Yeah, so we picked it just right. See there. 
we can see that this one fails. And what we can do in here is again, background color, foreground color. We have our hue, saturation, and lightness. Um, we can, and it'll update our hex color. So for example, here, we probably want to go darker. No, that's not gonna work, darker is that way. And depending on how far you wanna go, you know, there you've passed, so you can copy this value. And then when you update, when you update it here, and then everything will be hunky-dory. So now that passes in terms of contrast. Okay, so jumping back to Chromium, what if you're in Figma? Well, as mentioned, Figma has a plugin, and here's the one that I mentioned in the article called Color Contrast. How this works, I'm gonna close this out once again. So you click on this, it has plugins. You can see color contrast over there. Here's another plugin um, that I've used in the past called Just Contrast. Um, but if you run this, it's gonna open this up and now it's showing us, okay, normal text, large text, everything passes. So how do I know, how do I test this? Well, you just select everything. So there you go. Now you can see, oh no, if for large text, we're okay. But for normal text, we're failing, double A and triple A. So you can make adjustments here and apply the changes. Or it, alternatively, um, we can try out here and then say, okay, so there's that. And now we're passing at 6.27. We're passing both double A and triple A. Okay, but there's another tool called PenPot and it's an open source tool that is like Figma. The one thing that they don't have yet um, is plugins. And so they don't have a natural way here yet to test color contrast from what I know. Again, if you know pen, pen pot better than me, which is doesn't take a lot, um, please let me know if there is a way. But again, we can bring back our trusty color contrast analyzer and grab this guy, grab this one. And we actually know that this is pure black and we can see that it's failing. And again, we can boost our lightness, for example, until it passes. And maybe, and we can just use that color or we can play around with that, for example. So we wanna change the foreground color here to that. And then maybe we wanna play around with the idea of being in the purple hues roughly there, choosing something a little more like that. And then just to be sure, whoops, let's copy this color back, bring this one back, put it in, and yeah, we still pass. So we can use this more lighter, very, very, very light, like um, almost a light lavender on top of this. And um, it looks a bit nicer than just the pure white but we're still passing on color contrast. So yeah, and we can of course <clears throat> use this like we did in Safari. So everywhere that you can possibly need to test color contrast, there are tools to help you, whether it's in the design phase, whether it's when you're developing in the browser, you always have some tools at hand to help you ensure that your color contrast is always good. I hope you found this useful and that you find even more information helpful and that you help us and help everybody on the web make a web that's accessible to all. Until the next one.